I was sitting in this classroom, a leadership program with Landmark, and at the, I, there was a moment when I realized there's an area in my country that I could affect and I want to know what that would be. And I went to South Africa for a year, uh -huh. and this having been living in the United States for 25 years. And two weeks before leaving, this showed up in my life. Spoke to an artist at a gallery, and he shared with me the struggles and the strength of African artists in the country. I was really touched by his stories about, you know, dealers paying n nickels and dimes for the work. And then, of course, they sell it to foreigners for a huge price. They yeah. never see the money, and the country is struggling, the government is struggling to uplift South Africans. Yeah. And I saw this as my opportunity. I love beauty, I love color, and our country is so rich with this sort of thing, and they have such great stories to tell, and specifically during the apartheid era, those artists never got to tell their stories. Many of them died poor. The art made it out, but never the artist. And so Color Me Africa Fine Art is committed that the South African artists come and share their stories, showcase their work, be at exhibitions here in Chicago, educate, inspire, and really teach the local community about the wonderful culture that South African artists right. are. Thank <laughs> you. 
We are live streaming on Facebook right now. Welcome. Thank you for being here. We have more people coming into the room here as well as Facebook Live. We want to um, just take this opportunity to um, thank the band from Ghana for uh, participating in, in such short notice. Um, and they'll tell you more about who they are as we go through this afternoon. Thank you. Well, hello, hello, hello. And uh, greetings to everyone again, and welcome to Color Me Africa and their virtual art exhibition, The Good Work. Uh, as Soraya just shared with you, we are going to be featuring the works of two extraordinary artists, and uh, they focus on watercolor, the medium of watercolor, which is highly unusual uh, for coming out of Africa. And we'll be introducing you to them a little bit later on. Um, but first, we wanted to share with you a little bit about what Color Me Africa is all about. Uh, but I want to uh, reintroduce you to the young, beautiful uh, young lady that you just saw moments ago, Soraya Shepard. Uh, she is a very dear friend of mine, hailing from South Africa. We met a few years ago uh, here in Chicago uh, in a, a, a program that uh, allows us to develop our lives and uh, the Landmark Forum. And she shared with me during that experience that she really wanted to make a difference in the lives of South Africans, those who were emerging out of the apartheid system and regime. She said that she made a personal commitment and promise to the late Nelson Mandela to do something. And as a result, Color Me Africa emerged. I want you to really meet and hear from directly the founder, the president, the visionary of Color Me Africa, Sharia Shepard. Sharia, congratulations on all that you have done and all that you are going to do and all that we're going to celebrate today. Thank you so much, Deborah. Thank you. It's such an honor to be here and uh, to be able to, in spite of all of what we've all endured in the past year, um, the gift of Zooming has kept us literally opened up the world and we are able to bring the world to the world and nothing can stop us now. I know it's amazing <laughs> uh, how this technology is showing how connected we are um, and in, in many, many ways on many different levels. And we have always have known that art is the one true connector. Uh, it is an authentic expression that people all around the globe uh, engage in, and it defines culture, it defines people. Um, I would like for you to share with uh, the viewers and our audience and participants today, why you started Color Me Africa. I, um, well, I, I had the distinct privilege and honor to meet Nelson Mandela when he made his very first visit to the United States once he uh, was released from prison. Um, a little small snippet of my background, I worked in the Free Nelson Mandela campaign while I was living in South Africa. And, um, and we were, I made a promise that I, I, I couldn't bear living under the apartheid system and I knew that if I continued to live there, it would make it a big challenge for me. So I knew I could do more leaving. And I came to the United States and indeed, um, it has been a, a remarkable journey. And that from when I met him, I made that promise when he met all the exiles that I would go home and I would do something for country. And I, 20, 2011, um, I, I was able to discover that purpose when I was, and I was looking for my purpose and it came in the world of art. And, um, and what moved me was the beauty, the, the, the depth, the stories, the richness that I never got to see, even growing up in South Africa, and I wanted to know why. And um, and engaging artists, I discovered that during, and also research, I discovered that the art in South Africa during that difficult period by artists of color were 
rarely featured in galleries and even if they were they were not given access to being inside a gallery because the industry is predominantly white South African and I I found my my calling and the rest is history as they say and um, and we've done some incredible work and there's a lot more work to be done because South Africa has a hidden gems and I'm sure we're going to discover that throughout the continent. And we're going to discover some of that today with the artists that you um, are able to present here today. But let's learn a little bit more about your experience living under the system of apartheid and how you were able to get out. What brought you back home to South Africa? And in that journey, sparking your interest in the arts. Well, um, Growing up, the world of possibility under the oppressive system of apartheid was just non-existent. Your dreams were not going to be materializing. And I had big dreams. And I could see that there was just no place for me to express that. And a small example was I applied to design school and there were no schools for people of color. Many universities did not even accept people of color back then. And um, I became politically active. And when I, when I become, as they say, woke in America, I knew, I knew I couldn't close my eyes again. And I knew I needed to do something more about my life and my family. And I was given a, a, an incredible opportunity to, to become something. And, and, it, and it happened in this country with all its faults. It happened in the United States of America. And um, when I went through a very challenging period, like many during the recession, one of the things I realized is I really, really, really missed home. And how else could I, how can I bring home to me? And through Color Me Africa Fine Arts, I was able to do that. I was able to bring and keep home in my heart and connect with home and continent and country. And, um, and it's been like that since, and that settled that space in my heart that had this longing. And I get to the, see the music, I get to feel the rhythm, and I get to hear the sounds, and I listen to the artists, and I listen to what they're creating, and I'm a part of their world. And it has just enriched me, and I realized if it can do so much for my spirit, I want to take that, and I want to bring this to the United States, because I know not only will they grow and develop from this experience, the people who are touched by what they get to hear and see and experience by them will also leave with something very special. And I do want to remind everyone today that Color Me Africa is having a fundraiser tied to this event today. So we do want you to support her effort in being able to build and uh, expand this initiative so that she's able to bring more African artists to the public arena globally. Uh, so we are accepting all donations, no matter how great or how small. And Soraya, let's share how they're able to make those contributions today. Thank you. So you can go to www.colormeafricafinearts.com. We have a donation page right there. All and right. Thank you. And that makes it very, very simple. And uh, so we certainly hope that you do that. And while you're there, you can also take a look at all the wonderful artwork that she has on her website. And in particular, this series, the Good Work series. Um, what we're witnessing here today is part two in a series. Uh, today focuses on watercolor. Uh, so Soraya, tell us about the Good Work series. How did that come about? The Good Work series came about um, during, of course, COVID when we were unable to host exhibitions and be connected to each other. Um, we had to, and also discovering what, listening to the artists, discovering what they were challenged by, what they were dealing with, galleries no longer, you know, open, all of those things. And so what I heard from them mostly was how are we going to look at the future? And how do we create the future on our canvases, you know, and what, what's the story we want to tell and leave behind? And most all of them didn't want to reflect the current situation. 
they wanted to already live into a future that was brighter, that was happier, that was more joyous and filled with color. And that was the good work. And that is how it came about. And we want to continue that theme. And we also wanted the artists to, in their own way, um, interpret the good work, however they saw that. And you'll get to experience that um, shortly with the artist. So very briefly, uh, this is the second installation. Tell us what the first one was about and what we can expect today through this exhibition, which focuses on watercolor. Well, the first one, like any first, is a little, um, is a, it can be a little challenging because we're trying to find our path, but it actually turned out really, really interesting. So we had an artist from Ghana, I mean from Nigeria, Ebenezer Akinola, who is a well-known, well-celebrated and distinguished artist, not only in his, own, in his own country, but in Europe and in the United States. Um, he's also, and then we had an incredibly talented artist from the Cameroon um, who has been exhibited at Sotheby's and and all of the great names out there and has found himself very unhappy with that environment and he's decided to uh, 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 do something about how art is represented in the world and um, so he and I share a similar passion and so he was able to bring his work, which was explosive and not something I ever saw in my life. And I want to bring him back to a special exhibition here in Chicago to the Museum of Contemporary Art. He definitely stands apart from the rest. And that was the beginning of this journey. And uh, the exhibition that we have on display now is also very unique and probably just as explosive uh, featuring watercolors. Why watercolor? You know, I, um, again, it goes back to my, my own childhood, um, a favorite. I loved painting. I loved watercolor was the easy access for me. And I was, I didn't think of myself as an artist, but I think every child starts with watercolors and, uh, or a palette and, 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 and a brush and water. And, and there you go on some paper. And, um, and that is what it was like for me. And I met Edward in Johannesburg. And he, um, his work was so, so moving. Um, he, and, and how he described children, you know, when growing up during apartheid, there was so much sadness. There was so much of an energy that we, the, the energy wasn't there for there was no vibrancy, there was no laughter, there was no smile, because there was just struggle and suffering. Mm. And his work in post-apartheid South Africa was just so uplifting. It just expressed to me that there was hope. And then you look at children, that was the hope I saw. So later, I met Jonathan last year when we did our first series, he was a guest. And that is how we met. And when he shared with me the unique story about watercolor, which he himself will share, and that that is not a, a medium that many uh, uh, African uh, artists or black artists um, uh, uh, work with. And I found that rather intriguing. And I found that to be the case with Edward or that we are, were not able to find other artists of color working in this medium. And again, Jonathan will very powerfully describe why. Well, why don't we just jump right on over to, to Edward, uh, our first artist that we will um, have the privilege of hearing from this, this afternoon. Uh, Edward, how are you and how are things over in Ghana? Um, I'm very well. And how are you doing? Oh, we're doing exceptionally well. And it's so good yes. to see you again. There you are live in your studio. And, uh, at this, and what is the time there in Ghana? It's like, midday here in Chicago. And what is it? There's an eight hour difference. So it's pretty late there. Uh, here in Johannesburg, it's uh, 9.30. 9.30. Well, just after dinner time, which is, yeah. that's okay. Comfortable time. Well, tell <laughs> us, um, uh, Saray was just sharing that um, you have a powerful um, insight on why watercolor is, um, is A, so unique coming out of Africa 
and why it is your one of your mediums of choice. I know you work in several different mediums, but watercolor is one of your preferred mediums. Why is it preferred, A, and B, why is it so unique coming out of Africa? Um, watercolors for me, um, it was my first love. Um, it's, a, it's a medium that, that I loved uh, since from the beginning. As Surya, she just mentioned that, you know, uh, the children, they start with watercolors. I also started there. I loved watercolors from the beginning. And um, what makes me to love watercolors is because for me, it's easy, I mean, to express myself through watercolors. And then um, it gives me freedom and a space to play around, to get things that I don't get from any other medium that I've used before. And, what are those um, things? What kinds of things uh, do you get from watercolor that you don't get from anything else? Especially um, when, in other mediums, you don't have a room where you use water to flow, to to work. I mean, from your soul. I mean, from deep inside your heart. You see it when it flows on the paper, and then it connects with you. And then that I don't get in any medium. Mm -hmm. And um, the details that I get in watercolors, still I can't get in oils or any other. So it flows and it makes me to be free. I, it's, it's just, it's not easy to explain, but it's something that makes me, um, I become so happy when I'm, I'm using watercolors because I'm not restricted so much. There is that freedom that I get in working with watercolors. Mm. And, um, and, and watercolors do have a way of making you smile, right? Um, it, it's a happy medium, I would imagine. Yes. Um, and I, I do believe that I misspoke earlier, um, identifying you as being in Ghana, when in fact you're in South Africa, correct? Yeah, I'm in Johannesburg. You're in Johannesburg, yeah. Okay, Johannesburg, yes. that's what I was thinking, okay. Uh, let me get my geography correct. Um, <laughs> but, but you did have experiences with Soraya in understanding um, what was happening in South Africa under the apartheid system that you all knew each other coming through that. What was that experience like for you and how did it impact your art? Yeah, it was difficult in the beginning. Uh, even now, it's not yet that open. I mean, for people of color, I mean, to be in galleries, it's, it's still that little bit of tense, but it's, it's far better than during that time of apartheid because that time um, when you've got some paintings, you, you were supposed to go and sell in the parks, you know, sell on the, I, I mean, just to any individuals, you know, you, you wouldn't be able to sell in a gallery space. So how has your artwork changed possibly post-apartheid? Have you noticed a radical difference in the themes that you would paint um, and how you felt about your work versus now in post-apartheid? I think now it's far better because, you know, through social media, we are able to get people from all over the world to appreciate what you do. It's no longer just South Africa alone. You are able to communicate with other organizations out there who are also involved in watercolors, you know, so it's, it's far better. It's no longer that time because we were closed in one space. We couldn't even communicate with anyone out there. I see. So I understand that uh, we probably have a little bit of a, a tour of your studio. Is that available for us today? Yes, it is. Oh, yes. wonderful. <laughs> Okay, well, um, why don't you give us a quick tour of your studio there in Johannesburg uh, so we can see where the magic actually happens. Um, Edward, can you tell us also that you have, um, you work with children uh, there in, in uh, Johannesburg and uh, tell us what that experience is, is like and what it is that you teach these young children about watercolor, about art. Uh, actually, about the little children that I teach, it's, it started in 1995. I was working as a child and youth caregiver um, in Marshalltown in Johannesburg. Um, I was looking after, you know, children from orphanage 
the children that we take from street and we put them in a shelter, then we clean them, we take them to, to school and find places where they can uh, associate with other children. And then from there, I realized that the children were not having uh, um, any other activities that they were doing after school. Then that's where I saw the opportunity to start, you know, the school called Little Artist School. That's where everything started until today. We've been sponsored by more, more big uh, companies that they've been with us until today. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a, a group effort also, because now I've got, we've, we've, I've got a staff that we work together, I mean, to, to teach the children. Currently we've got 61 children that normally comes um, after, after school, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Then I give lessons, I mean, to the children. Well, it appears as though we have um, the video up um, with your studio. Uh, so walk us through, what are we seeing? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of different types of, of, of techniques um, that I'm working with. Um, you can just have a look. And then these I've been inspired more, you know, by you know, the children. Mm -hmm. um, if I want to say to a child, do a collage, I have to show by doing that myself. So that's why you find that I've got lots of mediums that I do because the inspiration is from the children. Um, and I'm curious too, who else influences you? I see that you are inspired by children and even Soraya uh, shared that she was inspired by your work because of the uh, levity that uh, comes to your artwork by seeing the children. Um, who are some of the other people that may have influenced you, other artists possibly? Uh, there is um, the late Dulce Robinson. Uh, she's the one, I think she helped me a lot when it comes to watercolors. She was working with lots of inks. She was very, very, uh, on a high level of knowledge when it comes to art. And then um, unfortunately she passed away 2010, but she, she's the one who has um, given me some more lessons. I mean, about, especially watercolors. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what are some of the other themes that you um, like to paint? Um, I, I normally like, you know, talking about um, children because I see children as future of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And um, the things that they are dealing with today. And I, I really like to see a happy child. That's, that's what I can try to say so. Mm -hmm. um, a positive message, I mean, of the children. Not always to, to see, I mean, poverty-like, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to move away from that and give positive messages about children. Wonderful. Uh, do we have images, Soraya, of uh, the pieces that will be showcased in this exhibition? We do, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. And what we can uh, do, um, Edward, if you can share with us um, what these pieces represent and um, what makes them unique and special. Uh, this piece, it's all about, you know, as a, an adult, don't forget where, where you come from. Don't forget who raised you up and then how you grew up. I mean, just thinking of your background and don't forget your past. Mm -hmm. um, Soraya, are we sharing um, any additional information about acquisition of these pieces or is that a private conversation? No, acquisition of the pieces, they are all on the website. Of course, you can in, uh, email me. At, um, my information will be posted at the end if you need more information about them. But they're all on the Facebook page. On the, color, on the Facebook page, you can purchase them as well as on Instagram and on the website. All righty, let's move to the next image. All righty. I see how you really like to work with these uh, the muted colors 
and a lot of blending and fading. And it almost is a borderline figurative abstraction, um, if you will. Yeah, actually, from the beginning, I, I, my, my main aim is to, is to involve a viewer uh, to be able to search and see what is in the painting. Mm -hmm. And then also to not to be rigid on with, with my watercolors. I just want the watercolors to flow in order to be, to form uh, something so that it should not be just as if I was trying to fight, I mean, to get the, the reality of what I'm seeing. I, I, I really like to see art in what, what, what I'm, I'm painting. Hmm. And you can feel the movement and the connectedness, especially like in this piece, of uh, the two children playing. I mean, this is a scene that all of us probably have experienced at one point or another, uh, being able to uh, feel the warmth in that relationship. It's fun. Yes. As I said, you know, a positive message all the time, seeing children playing like that, it gives a warming heart. I mean, to say there's something good that is happening yes, um, yes. around you. Yeah. So if you don't see children in, in these kinds of things, like they're playing, they, there's something that is wrong with community. Mm. Yes. yes. And so often we hear about the, the perils of, of childhood. It's good to see the innocence of childhood reflected in your paintings. This is this is extraordinary. Um, your version of a still life, maybe? Yeah, here yeah, it's actually I was uh, talking about the environment mm -hmm. uh, that it, it's it's a positive message. I mean, to look after environment, the good work that the people can do. I mean, just looking after the environment, making sure that we live healthy lifestyle in this uh, time that we are in. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, the issue of global warming and all these, I think you can understand where, where I'm going to, just yeah. to look after the environment, yes. Well, I, I, I just left my, my new home away from home, um, which is a garden here in Chicago. And um, hopefully I'll be able to grow some lovely flowers like these. This is exquisite. Love it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, do we have more? Okay. Oh, there you go. So I, a recurring theme, uh, children with their pets. Um, in both instances here, it, there are dogs, right? Yeah, a, a dog for me represents uh, protection or safety. Um, it's the same like umbrella. For me, it, it says a uh, protection. I mean, I mean, for the child to be, these things, we were missing them during COVID. You know, you find that, you know, we are all closed indoors. But immediately when the lockdown is over, we are able to go out and enjoy life, walk with the dog out there and feel protected, feel that you are safe. Those are the things that, that we were missing. So I'm trying to portray that in my paintings. Yes, yes. And how has the COVID experience affected you personally? Um, has it forced you to stay inside to do all of your work? How is it I couldn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't concentrate actually during the lockdown because it was like you are in prison and um, the daily things that you used to do, like going out to, to go shopping, you couldn't do that. And then it, it was like it's a more, it was a, something that oppresses the heart actually. But mm -hmm. um, immediately when it's lifted, you know, I felt hopeful that at least the, there's a future there. Oh, lovely. Absolutely exquisite. Um, Edward, we just want to thank you so very much for, for sharing your story. And we applaud you for the work that you're doing with uh, young people and creating the next generation of artists coming out of Johannesburg, South Africa. And uh, just want to thank you so very much and look forward to seeing more of your work here in the Color Me Africa exhibition. Um, one of the things that Soraya did say earlier is that um, each artist that participates in the good work has their own definition and reason for wanting to participate. What is your reason for participating in the good work series? What does it mean to you? 
Uh, it, it's, it's been a long time I wanted to work with uh, Surya. Um, for me, even the first time when we meet, uh, she, she was just uh, positive. I don't know how to put that, but I, I, I felt I felt at peace just meeting her. And all the time, it was my wish that one day I can work with her. So when she came with the idea of the good work, I was so happy. I mean, it was just, uh, it was like a, a child being given a candy, you know. So I was so happy that I'm going at least to, to work with her. So for me, the good work, it's all about positivity. I mean, I loved the even the theme itself because it, actually it's what I wanted to, to paint all the time. I mean, something that shows um, positivity. I, I don't know how to put it nicely there. Well, I think you put it exquisitely uh, by just wanting to reflect the, the positive sides of life, uh, those images that offer affirmation and, um, and hope and inspiration. And we thank you for that. Soraya? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Edward. Thank you so much. It's, um, I don't know what else to say. You're moved. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The yeah. Power, the power of belief and the power of intention. Yes, and, and, thank and you the magic for, of Soraya. Come on, let's face it, okay? Well, yes. we're, gonna, we're gonna paint the whole continent positive with color. Thank Absolutely. you. I would thank like you. to really just take this opportunity to bring back this incredible band um, who is going to take us to Ghana. Bravo. Thank you. This is song of uh, the legendary band Osipisa. It's called Welcome. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> You've been gone yet so long to hold. Come on back when you need help. You are home when you want to come on. Welcome home. Lost our band? They are muted, accidentally muted. Ah, I wanted to hear from them. Uh, yes. Usha yeah. is the name of the band, which is named after a, a hot, spicy pepper. And, uh, and, and certainly they offer a lot of spice uh, to in their music. And um, so I wanted to ask them about that. And yes, I don't going. know that they automatically got muted and I don't know how to unmute them. Hmm. Oh, guys. You yeah. have to invite them to unmute. I will, I will. Uh, I try, try going into the participants um, link at the bottom of your screen and see if you can unmute them from there, from yeah. your end. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Sit down. Hmm. Okay, so um, this is Takoshita Ensemble. I'm starting again. And then Ready? we are a band all the way from Ghana, West Africa. 
comprising of a group of young guys who want to address life issues, real life issues through the power of music. And we aim to impact our world and make it a better place through our music. Yes. So this is a uh, ensemble for you. And as we say, shoo sha, that is the sound that you make when you, you eat hot chili pepper. Susha. You, know, you, cannot, you, cannot, you cannot do away with um, the burning sensation of pepper. However, you, you don't say because of that burning sensation, you're not going to uh, eat pepper again. Pepper is nice, but it burns. That's how music is. You will love it. You hear it. You love it. It will burn you, but you like it. Ooh, so that is spicy that. food. Well, yes. <laughs> then you will love Shusha. Yes, yes, so, yes. It's back with so- to the world. As musicians, how has it been for you uh, dealing with this whole COVID environment? Uh, you haven't been able to go out and perform live. So how have you been sharing your craft and your music and inspiring people? So just like um, any other um, arts, any other events, um, uh, people, music is very, very important, especially even at this time. I mean, we are not able to hold the concerts and do all those things we're at liberty to do, give that to. But then um, we try as, as much as we can to entertain and we play our music like just like this. We, we do some virtual events and then we, we, we still get a way to entertain our, our people. But it's never been easy. We are all just praying that things will move back to normal so that we can uh, have a normal life but then we are holding up and and give us your name and give us your name and introduce your band okay so my name is um desmond man and the name of the band is bakushito and sambo we have genres like high life afro funk afro fusion anything that has to do with afro and quite recently we are incorporating um the latin field so we have the afro latin too this is bakushito Wonderful. Uh, well, we're going to request that you uh, give us a little bit of bridge music. Uh, we were going to allow you to uh, close our our uh, session uh, later on with um, a full few full songs. Um, but if you can just give us a little bridge as we set up for our next artist, we would greatly appreciate it because we need a little pepper. Oh, <laughs> a little so so <laughs> Thank you so very much. <laughs> Thank you. So now we get to, are we listening to Shusha now? Yeah, we'll listen just a little bit of Susha, I think, and then we can um, go to Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bravo. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so now we're going to uh, take you all the way over from uh, South Africa, all the way over to West Africa in Ghana. And our next artist, Jonathan Soraya. What was your relationship again with Jonathan and how did you all meet? Jonathan was a guest at my last show, actually, in December. Um, he's a friend of Ebenezer. And um, I asked him to share his work with me, and I absolutely fell in love. I've, Ghana is definitely a destination place for me. It's on my bucket list. Um, and I, uh, I really, when the more he shared about who he is and what he does and how he does it, I had to I had to bring him into one of our shows and he was so willing to do that and I'd much rather have him share he he's got incredible things to say about his work so with without much else to to do there please go ahead Jonathan and talk to us Hello thank Jonathan Thank you very much Hello you thank are. you very much Yes yes how are you how are you I'm good. I'm good. Enjoying the show so far. Thanks yeah. to Shepherd, the, the band, and they do it, and to everyone. Yes, yes, yes. So we have our sushi. Nice, yeah. hot, spicy, and peppery. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So we go over onto your work, uh, Jonathan, and we have um, a work up now. And much of your work focuses on the uh, coastal life uh, there in Ghana. And uh, tell us about uh, the images here that we're seeing now and, uh, and, and why do you focus on the coastal life in Ghana? Um, first of all, I would like to thank everybody and the team of Kalamine Africa for putting this show together. I'm very much grateful. And also to my good friend and mentor, Ebenezer Kinola, who through him, I was able to know about Kalami Africa. Um, the piece on the screen is a Jamestown. And Jamestown is one of the oldest fishing communities in the greater Accra region where I was born. And when you visit the fishing community, it will expose you to the rich traditional fishing style of the fishermen and the lifestyle of the people. So for an artist, this becomes very uh, fascinating and very complexity of their life whenever you have the chance to visit uh, Jamestown. So most of the time I travel to Jamestown, which is just about 45 minutes from where I live. And I go there with my sketch pad. And anytime I go there, I see a different side of how they live and their story. But unfortunately, the government decided to break it down to make way for new modern buildings and also to give them a new uh, ultra modern fishing environment. For me as an artist, I'm very happy. I was able to record a number of paintings from Jamestown, which has become a memory that generations can always uh, refer to when the new construction uh, begins. Well, you know what, you bring up a point that is so very important is how artists are historians in your own right. And yes. um, so now you have captured for forever um, yes. something that generations to come will not actually experience as you have, but they will have it as as a recorded document through art. Yes. Uh, so, you know, this is yeah, I'm always I'm just fascinated of how artists are able to take that personal aspect of their life and living experience and articulate it on the canvas. And it's really an authentic expression, probably more so than reading a book, which is edited several times over and over and over. But for an artist, it goes from your heart straight to the canvas. And uh, so it's, it's pure. Yeah. And what are we looking at here now? This is, and the, you know, the thing that I find exciting about your work is that you can feel it, right? It's like, I can feel those waves. That Thank I you very much. The yeah. wind. And that's my way of using watercolor to connect with people 
I want them to feel I see if they are there. You know, that is my little way. So when I'm painting, I, I allow the feelings to be more mutual that the viewer should be able to connect with the painting. And for me, that is the most important part of my watercolor paintings. Yes, yes. And um, wh why the use of watercolor uh, <laughs> versus another, other mediums? Um, as Edward shared, it allows him a freedom. What does watercolor do for you? Yes. For me, when I started, I didn't know anything much about watercolor. But due to my curiosity, I wanted to know what is all this watercolor about? And growing up in the art industry in Ghana, I couldn't find much watercolorist in the in the in Ghana. So I decided to stand out with watercolor. So it has taken me for almost uh, 20 years now, two decades, practicing and working with watercolor. And watercolor has given me a lot of opportunities to travel and to share my stories of where I live and what I do through uh, watercolor. And Color Me Africa is also another platform given to me to expose my watercolors uh, to the world. And I'm very much grateful. And um, for, your, for your artwork, um, it, it focuses here, but do you have other images that you work with as well outside of the coastal plain area? Um, all these images are linked together. This is the popular spot in Jamestown. And Jamestown is dominant of coastal scenes. So that is the, the lighthouse tower that you are seeing. So all my paintings are related to the coast. Over here, I wasn't showing much of the, uh, the coastal scene because I wanted to focus on the, the tower and also the, the environment where they live. A few seconds away from this spot, you are looking at the, the coastal scene. So they are all together. I was uh, really intrigued to, to find out from Soraya that you were one of the few, if not one of the few, watercolorists in Ghana. How did that's that very happen? right. Yes. How did yes, that yes. happen? Why, well, why I, I realized that there were a lot of artists who were basically not interested, also find it very challenging. So when I was doing my first degree uh, thesis, I had the opportunity to do a research on the importance of watercolor in our educational system. And I was able to find out that a lot of artists cannot cope with the challenges involved in painting with watercolor. Also, there were a lack of resources of materials. And basically, a lot of artists don't have the patience to master the watercolor. So due to all these challenges is what inspires me to set the, the way forward that generations can follow that once upon a time, there was a great watercolorist who was able to uh, bring Ghana watercolorists to the world and to inspire many people, which I'm still doing. I've trained a lot of students. I have a lot of students who are also coming in to study and I've become like a leader they are all looking up to. So I'm very much grateful that I chose watercolor. And you've also have captured the, the eye and the attention of a lot of international collectors, particularly over in China. How was that working out for you? Uh, it was amazing. The first time I had traveled to China was in 2014, just after my graduation. I was invited to China and the National Museum in Qingdao. They purchased four of my artwork for their National Museum alongside other international watercolor artists. So during the, uh, the seminar of the exhibition, the curator mentioned that my works and the strokes that I show in my works reminds them of the Chinese calligraphy writing, especially the way I do the boats, the poles on the boat, it fascinates them. So they collected four of the paintings, which are all coastal paintings into their museum. So from there, I was able to get more contact 
and also a curator who decided to exhibit more of my works in China. And it came across to Europe as well. When I travel to Europe, I've been going to Europe almost every two years. And they keep collecting my work because they fall in love with the, the poster sales. Yes, and I'm happy to also share the same experience with Americans today. Wonderful. And as uh, Soraya has said, each artist who has participated in the Good Work series did so for a specific reason. Um, what does participating in the Good Work series mean to you? Well, coming out from this uh, pandemic, uh, which we all know that it has created a lot of vacuum in our lives, uh, this exhibition is to create the awareness of how life has been with us. So I see this good work as vision as another way of contributing to help bring uh, African artists uh, to the world. So it's a very good initiative and congratulations to uh, Soria for the good work she's doing. Now I'm not sure if we have the, um, the studio tour of your space because it's a very unique. Do we have video of your studio? Yes. We have a video and I can also do a live video right now to move okay. the camera around. Oh, you're going to do it live. Okay. <laughs> well, give us the grand tour of um, where all the magic happens in your studio. <laughs> okay. So basically, if you can see, I displayed the works today. Um, mm -hmm. Here we have the the actual Jamestown and the title is The Return mm -hmm. Jamestown. Okay. And this is also a Jamestown painting that we are now seeing it, right? And the title is Memories of Jamestown. So that I can always remember the, the last pictures I created before the demolition. Mm -hmm. And this was also captured uh, on the coast of uh, Cape Coast that I, I mentioned earlier. And this was also captured in Cape Coast, mm -hmm. a sole fisherman sailing the boat. Same as here, capturing togetherness of how they both came together from fishing, they packed their boats. So the title is The Boat Pack. Mm -hmm. And basically in my studio, I don't use much of the easel because I have to work very freely on the floor because it allows me to move around the, the paint and the colors very easily without uh, distractions. Interesting. Because when, because so when I, working with watercolors, the, you need to control the board. So you have to stretch the paper in a such a way that it allows you to move the board up and down 90 degrees, any angle of your choice. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. Okay. So you have better Thank control you. when it's on the floor of, of how the water kind of moves over that canvas? Yes, you know, because this is watercolor. So yes. it has to yes. work freely. Sometimes you don't need to touch uh, the surface with your brush. So by mm -hmm. just touching the board, it allows the water to flow in the direction that you prefer. So what about um, the, the themes that you're dealing with now, um, now that you really can't get outside to do those wonderful coastal uh, scenes and capture them? I would imagine that they're radically different now in the midst of COVID. Um, what kind of images might we expect to see coming from you uh, as we emerge out of this whole COVID experience? Yes, I'm working uh, more on figurative works because I'm able to get the subjects right before me. I have a lot of models who post for me. And surprisingly to the world, what I'm trying to do now is to do a eight feet watercolor painting. Eight which feet? Has, yes, which oh. has never happened before. Mm -hmm. And I have the paper right stretched at the back of this board. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be the biggest surprise to, uh, when I finished it. Wow. So this board is full of uh, eight feet watercolor paper. Wow. Which I'm giving as a surprise. So, and what are you going to paint on that eight foot stretch of paper? 
Well, I have a series of false painting and the title is In Search of a New King. It's going to be a series of how kings are uh, initiated to take over the throne. So it's going to be a narrative uh, painting. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty amazing, Surya. <laughs> we might have to do another exhibition, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Africa. Yeah. Well, perhaps and, an opening at the gallery. Yes, because this is going to be the first time uh, people are going to see an eight feet watercolor painting coming from Africa. Oh, my word. Well, that yeah. is terribly exciting. Well, the, Edward, you heard that, so you may have to go up to 10 feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, amazing. I, I would just like to also add that this is the first time Edward has ever collaborated internationally. Really? Um, yes, yes. And you know, that was going to be my, my follow-up question, uh, Sarah, okay. go ahead. Reason was um, the power of collaboration. And um, how do you all, as, as artists in an artist community, uh, develop an affinity for one another, respect from one another's work, synergy that you might receive from one another, uh, inspiration that you might receive from one another? What are those relationships like? Um, if this is the first time for you, Edward, um, will you do it again? What did you glean from this experience? I, I think I will do it again. Um, <laughs> I, I think, you know, sharing ideas and listening to Jonathan also, it's an inspiration, I mean, for me, what I'm hearing. And that's so good, you know, because sometimes sharing ideas, you know, in art, you cannot, you cannot uh, compete, but you can be inspired. That's the only thing that you can get in art. It's the inspiration, yes. Yes. And, and, uh, and what about for you, Jonathan? Well, it's very good to know that I have an African brother in South <laughs> Africa who is also doing uh, watercolor because I wanted to encourage more of the Africans to take up the challenge in watercolor so that we can also show to the world what we can do with uh, watercolors. So That's I'm very happy for, for this collaboration with Edward. I'm very happy to know because this was my first time ever knowing that there's a, a South African artist, Edward, who is doing watercolor. So I'm very, very much uh, grateful for this opportunity. Such a lot of wonderful gifts yeah. coming out of this. Thank you. The, the unique thing about this is that watercolor is primarily dominated by um, whites are whites on the continent. It's a huge medium for them, and they are very successful globally with this medium. And what, which is what made this even more compelling, you know, that we have two artists of color who have chosen to take this on, and um, but to get the exposure that they deserve is something that we are standing for, where they, they, their work is elevated, their prices equally so, and they stand equal to any watercolorist anywhere on the planet, including Africa. Well, that's, that's what really stands as an invitation for all of those who are watching to please uh, consider seriously making that investment in art today and also making an investment and Color Me Africa, a re quick reminder that this is a fundraiser today for Color Me Africa, so that Soraya is able to continue to bring artists and showcase their work uh, virtually and one day soon, hopefully, in galleries around the globe, certainly here in Chicago and South Africa. And I know you've identified a few other points where you would like to have brick and mortar uh, gallery spaces. And even if not your own, that you're able to bring the artists in so they can circulate around the gallery community here in the United States. So yes. we do want to applaud you for that effort. And we ask that everyone who is watching to please go to colormeafricafineart.com and uh, follow the prompts to make a contribution today. Make it within this hour so we can acknowledge you globally uh, for your contribution that you make in support of Color Me Africa. That's well, colormeafricafineart.com. Go ahead, Thank Sarita. You. Thank you. Yeah, I've just received a donation, 
and, the Lord. <laughs> and uh, I wonder who the mystery donor is. <laughs> I was a mystery donor. Okay, well, hopefully it was like a million dollars, and everybody <laughs> makes a, a pledge today will match it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. We'll get to that, right? W? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> thank you. I will find out, and I'll make sure that person is acknowledged globally. Thank you, <laughs> and Soraya, if I may, for you know, we talk about artists who came on the first show and then showed up here now being. Uh, presented globally. I, if I may, I'd like to welcome and give a shout out to an artist who is with us right now and joining us for the first time, Ms. Akimi W. Um, Akimi Worrell is a mixed media artist from Westchester, New York, via, you know, an African via the Caribbean from, from Barbados. And um, I want to welcome Akimi and, and thank her for joining us today. And oh, please introduce yourself. I was going to ask Saray to introduce her team because, of course, on none of this. Is so, I'm just, so, uh, so uh, who is this dynamic woman that we know is part of your team? Hi, I'm Ginger. I am and so uh, amazed and enthralled with Saraya, and I work with her and Stephanie and Nadia to do the marketing communications for Color Me Africa. So a lot of the memes you see on the uh, social media and the stories that are being shared, uh, I'm responsible for that. Yeah, you know? uh, and the ideas just you know coming up with great ideas with Stephanie when you see down the lower right corner. You know, my, my partner in crime there and, and an amazing artist herself. And, you know, so we're doing our best to uh, to promote and support artists from Africa. Thank you so much, Ginger. Uh, just a little quick backstory. I met Ginger at the uh, Harlem Fine Art Show in 2018. Uh, she engaged one of our artists. They were going to work on a project. And her name kept coming up and eventually um, we, I dragged her into us and said, please help us, help us, please help us. <laughs> and here she is and she's been awesome. Thank you. And I really want to thank Gladys who's been, you know, Gladys, you were at the very beginning of this journey yourself. Mm -hmm. I shared with you what I want to do, what I want to create. And she's also a fellow gra landmark graduate. In fact, we are on an extraordinary journey together to make big, uh, make a big impact in the world at the moment in a course we're taking in leadership. And uh, I want to thank you for your contribution today. And thank you for extending yourself. I will reach out. Thank you. And I and and I and what we call an enrollment conversation. So I had to get to this point of the enrollment conversation. <laughs> and I thank you, Gladys. I I, I really I appreciate you even being here today. Thank you. May I say May I say something? Sure. I just want to say thank you, Jonathan and Edward. You know, I I'm a textile and stained glass artist, and my love for textile came through my undergraduate and. Um, I graduated in the 80s, mid 80s. And during that time, of course, apartheid was uh, uh, the word of apartheid was spreading in the United States. And I was able to bring one of the African National Congress representatives to my college campus here in Cleveland. It was wall to wall out the door. Oh, wow. Attendance. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll yeah. never forget. And they put us in the lower level of the union. They did not know that people were hungry for information. And so it was wall to wall out the door. And I remember after everyone left and I quote, we were closing the door, I looked to my professor and I said, so what do you think we did? And he says, you know, you got an A in this class, right? Ah. <laughs> you know? And I, I have, I really just um, um, love Nelson, Nelson Mandela. And I just love what you bring to the table. I, I just started dabbling into watercolor. See, I thought it was textile and stained glass only, but I started dabbling watercolor and never did I realize what you just said, Edward, about water flows from my heart. I never got that. That's, that's so beautiful. And, and Jonathan, when you said, you know, the history, you're an artist, is a historian in its own right, you know? I love art and that's my passion too. And I believe that everyone can manifest their gifts and discover what their gifts are through the mode of art. So Soraya, you know, I stand with you, you know, and um, and 
you know, and I love that art. You can't compete in art. I don't know who said that. I don't know if it was Edward or Jonathan. There's no competition in art. It's only inspiration. So, and, and, um, and um, our generous hostess. Wow. I'm impressed. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. You're very kind. And I, I, I thank you for sharing. That was very powerful. And, um, and, and to know that art is inspiring. It's invigorating. It's, it's life-giving. Um, we can take a look at the logo of Color Me Africa. And Soraya, you said it earlier that you really wanted to just show all the broad strokes of color that come out of Africa. And your logo even represents that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank Shall you. we open up to uh, Q&A if there are others who would like to uh, jump Absolutely. in? Absolutely. Anybody would like to ask any questions of our artists? Gladys, you welcome to anybody. The floor is open. Yes. And is Nadia close by? We did want to... Uh, I don't see her. Nadia. She's actually on a podcast and she knew she may not be making it. Okay. So. All right. Not, not to worry. And uh, we do want to give a shout out to your mother. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, we yes. Absolutely must do that. Thank and uh, we have the very good news that uh, she has been triumphant and um, in, in, in overcoming a health challenge or out of the hospital now. Right, and, right. Um, you know, sorry, I, we got three generations of women around this project. And I just think that's amazing in and of itself. Um, but your mother is a miracle. They have yeah, rolled her up five really? times and she has come back stronger each time. Yes, she is. And I actually told her to... Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but you're probably going to hear it. She has a message. Guys, all of you, that energy that came from all of you, all you gods out there, we are not separate. <coughs> Sorry. I am much better, and it's because of the energy. We are not separated. We are one connected human beings. And I appreciate what the energy I received from all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'm feeling so, so much better. And I, I don't know how I got here, but I now know. Your energies, all of you, my, my sweet darlings, I love all of you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> oh, you're going to make me cry. Oh, <laughs> I get to call that woman my mother, okay? No, it's just amazing. <laughs> amazing. But we, now, so we know, uh, Soraya, that the energy that you have, you got it, as we say, honestly. Uh, your mother is a, a true example. You didn't fall far from that tree. And, um, and we're just grateful uh, to have you in our living space now and able to experience you. Uh, and all that you have to offer in the big, 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 big things that you have uh, to accomplish through Color Me Africa Fine Arts. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you so much. Really, thank you. Um, a, a very short conversation with her the, the other morning. She, I called her. She said, honey, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> and home from the hospital. Understand that. Okay. And how, and how long has she that been That is the, the sweet hospital? sound. That is the sweetest sound I can hear. I said, mom, do you realize we could be grieving now? So thank you for, for, for making my show work turn out into what it's going to turn out into. It's in her <laughs> honor. All of this is in her honor. Uh, so Nadia has joined us, I believe. Hello. Welcome, Nadia. I've been watching on Facebook Live. So I've been oh, commenting okay. on Facebook Live. I had a whole bunch of comments. And yes, art, artist as a historian, Jonathan, absolutely. And the joy that you bring to your work, Edward, it was wonderful. Just splendid. Thank you very much. Awesome, Thank you. Deborah. Thank you. you need your own TV show. Oh, well, this is, this is it. Look, this is it. We're going to bring art to the world. Thank Absolutely. you. Stephanie, Ginger, Mom, the band. Yeah, oh, the, band. Just, the band. Shusha, shusha. Shusha. Before we, before we close out and before we, I want to just acknowledge the team, really, without these powerful women that I have just been embraced by this is would not be possible and again uh and each one just like a work of art you know where you found that wonderful piece you have a story behind each one 
when you hang it up, you want to share it with people and then you want to tell them the story. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go through all that, but I want you to know that I have a unique relationship with each and every one of you. Um, Deborah, you and I have a lot of great things ahead of us. I'm clear. I knew that from day one and I finally succeeded. So thank you for being a yes. Oh, well, thank you for being <laughs> persistent. <laughs> And, um, and the same thing with you, Nadia. Nadia is my daughter. I get to call her my daughter. And uh, she's my heart. She's my biggest benefactor and supporter and believes in me 110%. She's been through the ebbs and flows of this journey. And she's like watching her mother grow up. Thank you, Nadia. <laughs> and, and again, Ginger. You're so special to me. Thank you. I, I, I haven't actually met, I never met you personally. I know of you through some other artists, but I see if I've known you forever. So thank you for saying yes. And we're going to do more. And Stephanie, who has just been the creative genius behind this with me. Um, I, I don't know how I could have done this without all you creative human beings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a, wonderful adventure ahead and i look forward to more like this um and so if there aren't any questions of our artists i would like to like the the band to take us out bravo and also remember color me africa fine art .com to make those art acquisitions and to make a donation and support of color me africa fine art susha Sushi, get away <laughs> You're on mute, guys.